Welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name's Todd, and look what we got here today. We have a uh, Butler tube driver, two channel amplifier that um, um, I had a uh, customer send four amplifiers in. I've got uh, two four channel amps and two two channel amps. And sorry, it's been a little while since I put a video out. I have been working on this. Uh, this is the second one I've been working on, but I uh, have been working on this to try to understand fully the design, uh, what their intentions were on this, and how it works in general. Uh, so you can see here, I've got uh, both cameras running here for you. I've got my close-up camera giving you a little bit of a bird's eye view of the power supply. Uh, this uses the SG2846N to drive uh, the power supply transistors. So, on the, I can't remember what transistor it was, but on the first board that I did, uh, the 064 works perfect. Stays cool as can be. I mean, it's a great replacement transistor for the power supply of these. Um, I just wanted to just make a real quick note on that for you guys. Let me, uh, remove the fan here real quick and get this out of the way. So, I just wanted to just go over this board a little bit with you guys. It's a really interesting setup. So, you have your input over here. Uh, and to disassemble these boards, I don't want to say it's a nightmare, but you got to do some things to get the board actually out of the heat sink. You, uh, you have to take the RCAs, you have to desolder the RCA jacks off the wires uh, to get the really the board out without a lot of frustration, a lot of hassle. So, that's the best thing to do. So, I just got some uh, alligator clips uh, going back to my signal generator. Of course, using my standard 50 hertz signal, but we'll we'll get to that. It uses two independent gains. Uh, one gains for left, one gains for right. And then it has this, I don't even know what you call this, VTE uh, potentiometer over here. This is what took me, oh, I'm sorry, my, my uh, oscilloscope is blocking the uh, view there for you guys. So, this potentiometer right here was completely, um, it was broke inside. It was almost destroyed. Uh, I, I took a couple days to disassemble this and I rebuilt piece by piece the plastic inside, uh, the rotary part, and the little fingers that uh, the wipers uh, were completely broke off in there. The plastic little retainer pins were, were sheared off. So I got all that back together and the center guide pin was broke off. So I rebuilt this uh, potentiometer fully. And it's nice, solid, works as intended once again. Uh, if it were to take another direct hit on the front, it probably would not be able to get rebuilt again. So if the owner of this board is watching this video, I would just take real good care to not uh, have anything hit the front of these potentiometers. This one here, if I can turn it right, you can see this one here is uh, broke off on the edge. I don't have replacement potentiometers for these, so and I don't have the pieces to this, so I couldn't rebuild the front of that. So I just wanted to go through the design of this just briefly here. This uses the K135 and the J50 uh, transistors here for the, I'm going to call it the output. These go directly back to your terminals, your output terminals. And it uses the, uh, this board uses the uh, the Russian 6L6 vacuum tubes. So it's really interesting what they did here, is you have your input signal, comes in uh, through a couple TL072s, goes through the board, goes to this center TL072, drives this, oh, I forgot what this is. This is a, uh, a 5001 transistor. 
which drives this transistor, this TO220 package here, which oddly enough goes up and drives your 6L6 tube. But then the 6L6 tube drives the output transistors. So they're using uh, solid state to drive the tube for the tube to drive the solid state. I'm, I have no reason why that it would, that it's done that way. Uh, when I think of a tube amplifier, I'm thinking of using the 6L6s to drive like a, uh, an output transformer to drive your load. Uh, that way you don't have any solid state switching from the tube to the output. Maybe I'm thinking of this wrong. Uh, correct me, um, you know, correct me down below there. Uh, if, if I'm in the wrong thinking process of, of where a tube should be used in audio amplification, they say it's for clarity, for distortion, uh, but they're switching a solid state transistor. So that's where I got a little confused on uh, why they're setting it up this way. That's why it took me a little bit of time. I actually have a little, little drawings down here of where the signals are going. Um, and they're using a feedback going back through these transistors here that you see on the end. Uh, they're using a feedback going back to this TL072, of course, to help reduce distortion. So uh, the purpose of those 6L6s? Um, to reduce solid state transistors to drive the output? I'm not sure. Uh, what it does do, I know for a fact, is those 6L6s, they get hot. And you're just going to heat up the board in general. It's going to heat soak things. Those 6L6s are directly above the TL072 that is... Uh, responsible for reducing the noise on the output. So it's just an odd design. Great concept. I love tube amplifiers. Uh, my previous business was in the restoration of vacuum tube testers. I uh, And you can still pull up data sheets uh, for vacuum tubes. So they're still readily available. Um, it's just uh, the design of this was very interesting. Um, and I wanted to show you that it is functional. So excuse some noises here and any reaches that I have. I'm just going to plug the tubes back into the board. And I'm going to slide my fan back over the heat sink here because the fan leads are just a little short. So I will put that back in place. Um, it does take quite a bit of current to fire these up, so I can't use my 2 amp current limited power supply. It, it won't start up that way, so uh, you'll see this will budge just a few times and it'll spin up. This is this fan itself, I don't know if you can see it, um, right down in here it is thermostatically controlled. So they don't have an independent circuit that controls the speed of the fan, it is thermostatically controlled. which. That's another one of those things I may not agree upon because if you go to replace this fan, you're going to have to have a fan that's thermostatically controlled and right here internally, right above the heat sink. So let's go ahead and fire this up. And there it is. And you do have two neon lamps that are underneath the 6L6 tubes, though the glow that you're seeing is not from the heater. So they're using those just to kind of accent the tubes. Otherwise, those neons serve really no purpose except to accent, accent the tube. Um, as these tubes heat up, you will start to see just a little bit of the heater's glow. So let me make sure everything's turned down here. And let me get the scope fired back up for you guys. So you'll see in the upper left-hand corner there, uh, just to verify the output of the board, And you see, as you can see, it's it's just like 
I don't want to say it's like in most any other class uh, AB amplifier, but it does have an absolutely clean signal. So there's one channel, and here is the other channel. So uh, again, it's it's a great signal. This does get hot. Uh, that's just uh, the name of the game of these tube amplifiers. And yeah, believe it or not, I've got two other boards that are four channel boards that have four of these 6L6s. So you can imagine the heat that those boards will get. So make sure these aren't too hot, no. So the last thing I'd like to point out on these boards, excuse that nasty noise coming out of that socket. Uh, the next thing I wanted to point out were these transistors that are used in the outputs. They're the K135s again and the J50s. This is a uh, J50 transistor. And at first, I could not figure out why I was getting a clipped signal um, intermittent. Well, come to find out it was a, this potentiometer that I had rebuilt. But in that process, I ended up pulling out uh, this channel here, all of the transistors for this channel. And I was running some tests, and this this transistor, it wasn't showing shorted. It wasn't showing any real form of it being bad or open or not functional or I don't know what you'd call it. But here, let me get my close-up camera here for you guys. Uh, once I get it selected here on OBS here for you. So uh, let me get it turned around. So can anyone tell me what a P... D MOSFET is. <laughs> well, uh, of course the other ones don't come up as a PD MOSFET. Uh, uh, I, I'm lost. I don't, I'd have to look and see what D, the D stands for. Uh, but it definitely uh, was not functioning the way it should. Um, and this amplifier will run without that transistor in place. So these are expensive and they are hard to find. So I uh, just wanted to give you guys just a little rundown of these Butler tube amplifiers. Uh, interesting character, whoever designed these. I think it was designed by Butler himself. I think that was his name. Uh, there's some interesting uh, wording on the back here. So... Um, it does say, <laughs> what does it say here? Let me try to get it in view here. Plagiarists um, uh, get a life and a brain. Because it says, underneath that, it says, you suck. <laughs> so, it's in silver, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, but, uh, yeah, plagiarists get a brain, uh, you suck. Uh, so... I'm not sure. I mean, plagiarist, like I'm not trying to copy your board there, guy. I'm just trying to fix your board and understand uh, your thought process behind putting something like this together. So plagiarism? Sorry, I'm, I don't think I'm plagiarizing. I'm just repairing your board. Um, It did have a little burnt trace. At one time, it looked like it had a short uh, on the RCA, on the inputs here. Uh, but I got that all glued back down, solid as a rock, I'll fix back up. So this board is good to go, minus the missing transistor. I gotta ask the owner what he'd like me to do, because these are in parallel. Um, otherwise, these are simple, straightforward. Just like a, almost like a TL494 switching power supply. Uh, Push-pull, got some rectifiers in here. Two capacitors, two 6L6 tubes. Of course, makes a good Class AB amplifier. So, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll get to you as soon as I can on them. I will have these boards for a little while. I'll have them back out to the owner as soon as I can. So, any questions that you have, if you can catch them now, I'll try to answer while I have the boards here. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you for watching. We'll catch you again on the next one. Stay safe.